All right. Let, let's let's talk about privacy, because this was a big one for me. The it, it, like there, so there's two things that that Apple announced with privacy, as I see it. You guys might have more. Uh, the first is very much focused on mail, which is that mail uh, has now has uh, constructs in it that will keep all of those tracking beacons that are buried in email addresses, the little pixel trackers that are buried in email, not email addresses that are buried in email messages uh, that track your IP address and then your location. And then because you've loaded the pixel that tells someone whoever owns the pixel that you have read the message, they are now obscuring everything from all of that. So that theoretically People don't even know that you've opened their email. They don't know who you are. They don't know where you were when you did that. I, and and this, I, I can think of a million cases where, maybe not a million, but many cases where this will cause some issues for the way certain people do business. But um, But it totally fits with what Apple does, and I applaud them for it. I think it's great. I think it causes more good than harm, though it will cause a little bit of harm, uh, and that's okay. Uh, and then there's iCloud. Plus. So I want to put that sort of on a on a shelf. And then there's iCloud Plus, hmm. which has three things in it. Um, and I'm going out of order intentionally. It has home HomeKit secure video, which will open to more than five cameras, which is great. Um, there is hide my email, which is create lets you create, you know, a, a, a obfuscated email addresses. So that email gets to you, but no one knows what your email address is if you want to use it. Mm -hmm. They say that the pricing on iCloud Plus remains the same, which is... Tell, tell me you didn't think as they were going through this, when you saw that plus sign, you yeah. were thinking, plus only the $5 price. more a night. Of course. A month. Well, yeah. especially with the third feature, which is what they're calling private relay. Where it sounds like they've essentially recreated the Tor network, although hopefully quite a bit faster, where it's bouncing your traffic through two different servers. So nobody knows who you are or where you're coming from, not even Apple's servers in the middle. But, but also they're encrypting everything. Correct. Right. So it's that's think about it. And they say no performance lag. Right. Which is unlike the Tor network. Right. Which yeah. is right. Totally. Yeah. <laughs> but that's really interesting to me that they've essentially taken this and done it. It's a, effectively like a multi-layered VPN, although I'm sure someone out there will have a better terminology than that. Feedback at MacGeekab.com is the email address to yell at us and, and tell us what we got wrong. We'd appreciate uh, uh, it. I would say a, a VPN tends to fool somebody into thinking your traffic originates from another country, say. Sure. Whereas this wouldn't do that. It's, it's Maybe just, it would. There's no country of origin or whatever. Uh, who or knows? It's all Cupertino. My right. concern with that and... My friend Dave did say feedback at MacGeekGap.com, just to make sure you guys heard that. I said um, feedback at MacGeekGap.com. Okay. Oh, fe feedback? At MacGeekGap.com. Well, we, we usually do it in threes, Mark, but, um, <laughs> but we'll, we'll, we'll let you add one. Um, what concerns me is similar to what they did with the MAC address randomization in iOS. This is going to break things that I may not want broken. <laughs> Fair. I may want people that email me to know that I opened it or know my location or make my eye. And, and to tell you the truth. So some of the, 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 in iOS now, they have a thing now where it's like, Oh, do you want to share blah, blah with blah, blah, uh, this info with this person? And I'm like, you know, honestly, and you know, call me crazy. But for most of them, I'm like, you know, I like this vendor. So yes, I will allow them to to continue to track me to. because um and i'll talk about it in a future episode but like the other day in instagram i got an ad for a product that i've been looking for for ages and it popped right up because they know what i like it, it was a, a a charging cable multi-tip and and it's animated and stuff and i've been looking for this and and they know this because you know i look for it every now and then on amazon and stuff like that and all of a sudden it came up so not all tracking is bad, in my opinion. But and Apple lets you make that choice, right? They when, when an well, well, well they let you make the choice, and I think that's good here. The 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 mention of masking all this in mail, it sounds like they're going to by default do this, and I'm not happy about this. Just like when they by default would randomize your MAC address, 
that caused a lot of grief for a lot of people because if they tied their MAC address to their DHCP, all of a sudden it broke. And they're like, what did I do wrong? And it's like, you did nothing wrong. Apple just kind of made a choice for you. Yeah. So. I, one thing about this private relay that I have a that I I, I want to find out more, and I'm almost certain that I will be able to watch a dub dub session this week to answer this question, is what apps does it affect? Because it sounds like it might only affect Safari, and mm-hmm. I would like it to be able to affect other things. Very specifically, I would like to see it affect the podcast app. Because just like there are pixels that are being put into our mail, some podcasts, not this one, but some podcasts are allowing pixels to be put into the download Mm. of the podcast. And you have no, like the worst part about that is there is no way to opt in. You, you are just Mm. like, if the, if the host publisher, whoever chooses to do it, you are, you are tracked. And then they track you by going to, you know, when you go to different sponsors websites and they correlate it all together again, it's fine if you want to opt into being tracked, but podcasting doesn't really have a way of doing that. So I would love to see Apple fix that problem through private relay with more than just Safari. And we'll find out. Um, You know, I, I have an app that I use a fair amount that is now broke. I literally just today got an announcement from them that basically said, we've done everything we can to work with Apple. We cannot find a solution that Apple will accept. And it's called Mailplane. And it's mm-hmm. basically a, um, a Google Mail uh, app. Um, that's on my end. Okay. <laughs> the squeaky door. That I, heard, I heard the squeaky door. I'm like, did someone just walk into <laughs> my room? A haunted house. You know? <laughs> that's cool. <laughs> <laughs> but the... Um, Basically, the the app does that thing where they put up a you know in effect a a a, pay, a web page with you know Google Mail on the web page, but they do it they hide everything they can hide, but it's now not going to work anymore. And they sent out yeah. a letter saying basically we'll be happy to give you your money back, but we can't fix this. And now it's mm. end of life, which it just makes me sad because I'm so used to it. I I now need to find a mail client, and I don't know what to what the good mail client is, but I'll maybe I'll use um, Monterey's uh, mail. I'll give it another shot. Sure. Sure. My yeah. Time trying Apple mail. I, I used to use third party mail clients. I, I, you know, I chose them very specifically for their features and I ran into that scenario, maybe not quite that draconian an end, uh, but I've ran into that sort of functionality limitation scenario too many times that I decided I'm just all in on Apple mail Hopefully it remains extensible, at least as it is now, so I can use things like Mail Acton and Sig Pro and, you know, the little mm-hmm. plugins for mail. But that, yeah, because of that exact thing where Apple can just like decide, hey, today's the day that doesn't work anymore. I, I can't have that done to my email. One of the things that you it just came up with you and me today was you said, um, I'm you know, I send mail and then I get a delay. I use that in Mailplane. Is that a thing in Apple Mail that I can send a mail and have it be delayed? It's not, but it is a thing in uh, Small Cubed is the company that makes a what they call the Small Cubed Suite, which is really a, a collection of four plugins. One of those plugins is called Mail Acton, and Mail Acton lets me do that, among many other things. But is that it is a mail plugin, or it's a mail plugin. Yeah, oh. I'll put it in the show notes, and I'll uh, because you know. We're buddies here now. I'll send you a link to the uh, thing. But yeah, right. yep, yep. No, Mail Acton is great for that. And as a as a aside, delaying my email, and I choose to have it delayed by two minutes by default. Uh, you can choose whatever you want, uh, including none. You know, no delay. But that two minute delay has a saved my bacon more times than I care to admit. And, and both in terms of like I really don't want to send that email, but also. You hit send, you go focus on something else, and then it hits you like, wait, I should also say this or I should (laughs) while I'm in this, I should ask this question and I can go and edit the message and rework it and send it all off. And then it's like all good. I also I also have it warn me if the word attach is in the email and yet there is no (laughs) attachment. Yep. Yep. Same thing. <laughs> yep. That's funny. So yeah, small cubes, mail, mail suite, which has mail act on in it is your answer. So, sorry to derail the conversation. But it's, it's a good one. 